Hello and welcome. Today I'll be finally taking a look at the SU-30 mod by Codename Flanker. Um, I'm currently sitting inside the cockpit of a Royal Malaysian Air Force variant, the MKM. So we'll just take a look around the cockpit quickly. As you can see it's all been nicely modelled, weathered. Um, quite a big leap from the previous uh, version of the mod. Uh, around about 75% to 80% of the buttons are actually clickable um, and actually function. Um, so, I mean, I'm not going to get too in-depth because I'm going to do a, a further video on this to um, discuss the extras that are in, in that come with the mod and the, the extra systems. But um, just a quick look round, and as you can see, like we can change the uh, the situational awareness uh, page there to RWR or VSD, which is basically the electronic flight instruments. Um, and to go back, we just click across the top here. Uh, so we'll keep that on uh, RWR. All these. Uh, all your usual uh, dials and uh, gauges that you can adjust using the knobs there. Um, countermeasures over here, you know, we're used to having them over this side, so that's changed. This part here not usable. Um, we've got autopilot down here, um, radios there. Um, this panel here is not in use apart from that switch there, which as far as I can tell does nothing but seems to be clickable but doesn't move um, yeah so we've got other unusable switches and dials in this panel this panel and in this panel uh, circuit breakers back there um, some more clickable switches along here as I say all the MFD buttons around the sides all, all work you know, UFC up here uh, you can do your comms here, uh, switch between uh, navigation, air to air, air to ground. None of these buttons at the moment are clickable. Uh, you can adjust the brightness with these knobs down the bottom and you can change, you can declutter or um, change the head up display to your liking. Over this side we've got our engine switches, generators and all our power switches for all the um, systems and lighting so yeah uh, that's front cockpit if we jump in the back so as you can see um, pretty much similar to the front just some bits and pieces have moved around none of this stuff is actually clickable at the moment in the back not even the lighting or anything as such MFDs are clickable and uh, um, obviously you can fly from the back if you if you so wish and you've got the extra big screen in the middle there because obviously this is where the we weapon systems operator would sit so um, looking forward to seeing all these being implemented the way they should be um, so yeah um, looks good all round um, the only thing I will say uh, for the front the frame rate killer for me is the mirrors not 100% sure why, but mm, my computer just does not like them. So I won't be using those. So um, let's get down to the end of the runway, I guess. So taking a look through the external view, um, you can see that the modelling and the textures are brilliant. Um, the Royal Malaysian Air Force livery, nicely done, nicely weathered to a level that is believable and the heat panels on the um, exhaust they just look fantastic and I think they've done a really good um, really good job at the texturing at the back end of the aircraft here um, and while we're at the back end if I switch on the thrust vectoring as you can see the animation for thrust vectoring is there um, it will not be thrust vectoring in the traditional sense as it's just the ASC 
switched off like you you can do in the SU33 or SU27. Um, so basically, you're um, over the limiters have been taken off the uh, flight controls, and you're able basically be able to do the Cobra um, like you can in the other aircraft. So um, while the animation for thrust vectoring is there, it's you just have to need to remember that it's not thrust vectoring in the traditional sense because it's just um, the ASC from the SU-33. So yeah, that's the tail end done, so we'll jump back into the cockpit. So I'm in the air-to-air -air guise of the aircraft, so the avionics will be used from the SU-33 and I've got a couple of targets up to the north of where I am at the moment, so let's get rolling and we'll uh, shoot a couple of aircraft down and uh, we'll have a look at some of the uh, controls while we're up. Gear up, flaps up, trim out. While we're out here, let's have a look at the afterburners. They've got a lovely blue hue to them. Very nicely done. Okay, so let's head north. Switch the radar on. Now we're going to change our screen here to the weapon systems. As you can see, I've got all my air to air missiles there and if we go to TGP which is the targeting pod section of it all and if we go into um, beyond visual range as you can see um, it's added the traditional um, SU-33, SU-27 avionics there you can see I'm moving the box around and as you can see we've got some targets up here to the right uh, to the left, sorry. If we look down there, we can see them on our on our target screen. So it's just getting used to the digital layout um, and remembering where things are. Uh, if we click on one of these, what we've got here. Okay, so that's quite quite some distance away. So if we speed up and head on that bearing. And I have a an extended range R27. So I'm not gonna fire it off just yet, even though I'm within maximum range. Try and get a little bit closer. I've got launch authority as you can see there, LA. Okay, so we're going to let it go now. Follow it. And that's one tornado destroyed. As you can see, just to the right here, I've set up a um, bombing range. I've got there uh, some strafe strafing targets down there, I've got some armoured personnel carriers down there and I've got some bombing circles as well and then to my left I have some ship targets there so I'll come back in the air to ground mode and um, show you those shortly um, just want to fire off a helmet mounted sight missile and if I can find another target somewhere. I know there's a P3 floating around here somewhere. I 
There he is. Okay. Okay, so we're in range, squeeze it off. Oh well, we managed to get it away from that one. Another one. Go on, you can get him, you can get him, you can get him. Oh, so annoying. Okay, so we'll switch the guns. go. P3 down. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to air to ground and uh, bomb some targets. Okay, so as you can see we are now in the air to ground variant. Um, got a range of air to surface missiles, bombs, rockets and um, yeah, so this is the SM variant. I just thought I'd give you a view from the outside of the, the weaponry that I'm using and also I've got targeting pod, Damocles as they call it, um, so we'll get back in the cockpit. Right okay so obviously to use these weapons we're going to need to go back into the weapons section and then go to our targeting pod and choose either Elin, Fleur or TV uh, depending on what you're using. Now we get into air to ground mode. Now I am currently using the cab, the Fab 250s there, SA KH29T, and uh, back to the cab 1500Ls. So these are the free fall bombs. Um, don't particularly want to be using those just yet. These are the rockets. Use those first on the APCs. Let's speed it up a bit. Okay, and to use these weapons, we're going to need to go into the MASD, which is your weapons uh, stores management system. Go to TGP, which is our targeting pod, and you can choose either Elint, Fleur, or TV. So I get into air to ground mode, and I'm going to be using rockets first. Okay, I'm going to be using these on the armoured personnel carriers that I have down there. ourselves into a nice shallow dive. Again, wait to get in range. Okay. Say that was a Allergy. successful bomb Allergy. run or missile firing run. Okay, so next Just go for our gravity bombs and I'm going to drop those on the circular targets. Okay, roll out onto the target. No, we've got a P3 under us. And 
there we go, dropping conventional bombs. Okay, so we'll just see if I can get the TV guided bomb to work. Okay. There we go. Elnia has been destroyed. So there we go. That's uh, air to ground. That wasn't too difficult. Like I say, if you used the Su-33 before, won't be a problem at all. Um, just a bit more symbology in the HUD, and just finding your way around the cockpit, making sure that you uh, master arm and use your proper um, proper systems basically so while we're here I thought I'd show you the um, thrust vectoring I say that in inverted commas um, the ASC control um, so yeah let's switch that on and see what happens Minimum speed. Fuel, 1500. As you can see, it becomes super maneuverable. You can switch that back off now. Minimum speed. Speed up. And we're back into normal flight. If we do a simple roll without thrust vectoring, as you can see, it's quite tight, but not, not as tight as you'd expect. And again, look for the thrust vectoring light to show up. There you go. And now if we do it, you can see we're causing a red out because it's, uh, well, there we go. Whoops. Causing the blood to go to our head. And then I cause myself to have a blackout. So yeah, the, um, the ASC is there if and when you want it. Um, the control for thrust vectoring is down here. As you can see, it says TVC or TV control. I always flick that on before I take off. And then there is a switch here which activates and deactivates. But I've got that as uh, bound to a key on my, or a button on my flight controls. So that if I need it, I've got it to hand. You can see. And now I'm back out of it. So let's get back to base and um, well yeah there's not much else really to show you apart from landing. Brake shoots are the same. Um, so ba uh, to sum it up I guess it's a, a nicely and I mean this in the, the, the best possible way a nicely redressed SU-33 um, it's um, very immersive in comparison to the previous versions of the mod. Um, the controls are pretty good. It's like I say, the, if you don't switch things on in the cockpit, they will not work out of, out of the cockpit. As you can see, we have um, a. a countermeasures control panel there just for instance that is set to standby 
if I press the uh, button to dispense um, flares or, or chaff, I think you can see nothing happens. If I go in, set it to manual, now press the button, we now have a flare program, it will release five flares. If I change that to program two by this button here, go back outside, we're now releasing chaff and so on and so forth. Um, and apparently there are more programs in the works, so with further updates there will be uh, different uh, combinations of countermeasure releases. Fuel 500. So let's get this thing on the deck. Okay, so that's the SU-30 mod by Codename Flanker. Um, okay, so that's the SU-30 mod by Codename Flanker. Highly recommend it. Um, don't expect um, high the highest of fidelity but it's um, it's a work in progress it's very good uh, all the systems work as they should um, using the uh, SU-33 and SU-25T avionics and um, yeah it looks good it is very immersive um, and yeah very nicely done uh, I think they've done a fantastic job in the, the, the time that they've they've been away and been working on it so like I say um, I'll leave a discord link Dingle in the description fuel. I really wish I wouldn't be interrupted by systems shouting out at me um, I'll leave their discord in the description so go go over and say hi or um, just you know give them some support um, because they're doing a fantastic job and I'm a bit biased anyway because I love anything Russian um, but yeah fun fun times um, be great with uh, in multiplayer um, be even better when the multi crew is implemented and the systems in the back um, will do what they they have to do so then you can have a two-man crew working very promising f future for this uh, project if they see it through to the end um, so yeah well worth investing your time in um, so thank you for watching as always take care and I'll see you in the next one